here. Uh, hold on a second. I don't want that falling so easily. Up, 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 up. Hold on, hold on. We don't need this thing falling now. Okay, that should be good enough. Lord's will. Hold on. Turn you over a bit that way. Okay. First and foremost, as always, I would like to give all praises, honor, glory, respect, and blessings to the creators of the heaven and earth. Salutations to the Lord's elect of the four corners of the earth, pushing this truth and sincerity while patiently waiting for the Hawaii Shai's return. And double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone, which have taught us everything we know through the spirit and power of Yahweh Mahashon, Yahweh Shah. Now I'm out here once again to prophesy the downfall and destruction of Babylon, which is the United States of America. Okay, America is known as Babylon the Great especially in the book of Revelation. Okay, John the uh, Revelator saw a new Babylon uh, and, um, and he wrote it down in the book of Revelation. Okay, come to find out America is that new Babylon which will be reinstated, which will be back here on the earth today. Okay, known as Babylon the Great. Okay, I'm also out here to let you so-called Negro Latino and Native Indians know that you are that you are God's true chosen people according to the Holy Scriptures, according to biblical prophecy, and that if you don't repent from your iniquities or your sins, that who you call God and Jesus is going to destroy you. Okay, so today I'm going to be going into you know um Basically, some encouraging and, 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 and um, comforting. I'm going to be going into encouraging and comforting lessons because we're living in a time where we're about to enter into Jacob's trouble. And it's important to know that if you're of the elect, that no matter what scenario the Lord puts you in, He's going to deliver you out of it. For being a witness of Yahweh Shai, even if I have to be beheaded in the concentration camp for being a witness of Yahweh Shai, okay? Lord's will, it, it, is a, it is a swift and merciful death, okay? Because, uh, you know, it, it's written, Revelation, the 20th chapter, okay? Some of us is going to be beheaded. Some of us are going to be martyrs before this truth, you know? But then, like, like Yahweh Shai said, there be some standing here which shall not taste the death till they see the Son of Man coming in the cloud with great glory. So there's there's gonna there there are men that are of the elect that are still gonna be around even until Yahweh Shai returns and what the world calls a UFO. Okay, so start off in 2nd Esdras, right? Let's start off in 2nd Esdras, chapter 2. And give me a moment here, okay? Okay, 2nd Esdras, chapter 2. No, 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 not 2nd Esdras, uh, Sirach. Let's go to the book of Sirach. Right here. The book of 
Rock, chapter 2, verse 1. My son, if thou come and serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. Okay, and what is temptation? Temptation is enticement to sin. You see, when hell breaks loose in America, you know, there's going to be martial law all throughout the streets. There's going to be civil wars everywhere. There's going to be a food shortage. There's going to be cannibalism. People's going to be starving out here. There's going to be disease warfare. There's going to be monstrous apparitions. There's going to be wild animals roaming the streets, such as lions, bears, cougars, tigers, jaguars, bears, you name it, wolves. They're all going to be roaming the streets, uh, uh, eating people alive. Okay, it's going to be all kinds of, of flies, like, like uh, murder hornets, uh, 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 mosquitoes the size of softballs flying around, biting people, stinging people. Pe people who's going to have to deal with, uh, with, with other insects. You know, the, the, the Lord's going to open up the vortex, man. And he's he's going to allow other world, uh, other uh, outer worldly dimensional creatures to come in and fuck shit up. Like, like, like a Chithulu. Okay, uh, Chithulu. You know, the Lord's going to elite. He's going to release Leviathan on this country. Okay, there's going to be robots, Terminator robots, roaming around, shooting and terminating people. You know, and, and in the midst of all this, a lot of people are going to cave in. A lot of people are going to cave in, especially our people, and they're going to run to the government for answers and protection. And in order to receive protection from the government, you're going to have to take a device the size of a grain of rice, what the world calls an RFID CA diabetes, which is the mark of the beast. You're going to have to take that if you want protection, if you want to feed your family, if you want to feed yourself, you're going to have to, you're going to, have to go by, well, you're going to have to go by what Esau wants. So a lot of our people, they're, they're, they're going to they're gonna, uh, succumb to, to taking the uh, the karagma, the CHIP, just to eat, which is what? Temptation, okay? And, and again, temptation is enticement to sin, you know? Because whenever your flesh starts catching down, you know, like, like the scriptures say, he, he that departed from, from evil making himself a prey. And what do you become a prey to? You become a prey to Jesus. So from the time you wake up to the truth, all the way up to now, you're gonna be tempted by demons to do what? To do sin. You know, here it is, it's the Sabbath, but the Sabbath day is when your woman is the most horniest. Come on, man, you know? You know, you might not have you, you, you might have only uh, food that you can cook in your house and it's the Sabbath, you know? Well, I mean, if you ask me, I'm, I'm probably gonna just go on a fast. I'm not cooking on the Sabbath, you know? You know, that, that, that weed demon, that weed demon's jumped on a lot of people, man, you know? You know, you, you, know, you, you, you miss getting high and playing video games and you miss those, those special, which, you know? It's not something you smoke, okay? You're not supposed to smoke herbs. Herbs is something you eat, okay? Like, like the Lord said, like it says in um, the book of Sharak, I believe the uh, the 38th chapter, the Lord have created medicines out of the earth. Well, those herbs are medicines. But you see, they're being used for the wrong reasons. But you see, demons is what entices you to sin. So, uh, uh, Sirach chapter 2, verse 1, my son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation, okay? Set thy, set thy heart, which the word heart goes back to the Hebrew word lob, which means your mind, okay? Set, set your mind aright and continually endure, right? And the reason why the Lord is putting us through the ringer right now is so when hell does break loose in America, you know, mentally, we can be prepared for it, as well as spiritually. Because like it tells you in Isaiah 33 and six, which I'm gonna get that later, and knowledge and wisdom shall be the stability of thy times 
and, and strength and salvation, the fear of the Lord is his treasure. <coughs> so set thy mind aright and constantly endure and make not haste in the time of trouble. Okay, now when it says make make not haste in the time of trouble, that means don't make irrational decisions, okay? You know there's no food in your house. You know you got mouths to feed. Don't make irrational decisions, you know? You know, don't, don't, you know, don't, don't, don't start questioning, am I really gonna eat? You know, da 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 da. What happens if, what, what if this happens? What if that happens? Because you know what that's gonna lead to? That's gonna lead to you taking the, uh, the, uh, karagma. The, 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 uh, karagma. It's gonna lead to you taking the CHIP. Which ultimately will lead you to your destruction. Okay? So don't make haste at a time of trouble, you know? If you see that your house is surrounded by martial law troops, <laughs> you know, the first thing you should be doing is praying. You should be calling on Yahweh Bahashom, Yahweh Shai, and sending up prayers. Be like, Lord, help me. You know, I'm in trouble here. I'm, I'm, I'm surrounded by the enemy. You know, the, en the enemy's intending to do harm to me, to my family. Bubba Kashar, deliver me, please. You said, you know, uh, like Apostle Kabar did a video, you know, uh, uh, so much back, you know, bring, bring it back into the Lord's remembrance, you know. You know, Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, you said if I did this, you, you would do this for me, you know. You know, you, you said that my family would eat if, 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 I, if I did what I was supposed to, you know. In, in uh, Isaiah the 65th chapter, you said that, that, that your servants would eat, you know. You know, and, and again, like it says in um, Hebrews the 11th chapter, without faith, it is impossible to please Yahweh. So you know, well, you know, well, when you send up, when you send up prayers, you know, you know, you you you, you should not be uh, wavering. Okay, you 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 should not be wavering in your mind. You know, you got to believe wholeheartedly. So make not haste in the time of trouble, you know? You know, I understand that what's going on during the time of Jacob's trouble is really the wrath of the Lord coming down upon the nation of Israel for their rebellion and their refusal to repent, okay? Verse three, okay? Cleave unto him and depart not away that thou mayest be increased at that last end, right? And how do you depart away? You basically take your hand off the plow, you know? You take your hand off the plow, you stop running the race, you fan your hand, you turn around, you start to jog back, you say, fuck it, you can't do it no more. And there's, there's thousands of men, probably more than that, that have taken their hand off the plow and went back into the world. Okay? In which the scriptures is going to tell you what's going to happen to those that, that take their hand off the plow. Okay? And I believe that's also in Luke the sixth chapter. No man having put his hand to, a, to his plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of heaven. Because remember, Israel is likened to a comely and delicate woman. So if, if you look back, well, basically, you, you, you're, you're no different from Lot's wife looked back and what happened what happened to Lot's wife when she looked back she got turned into a pillar of salt so so those who came into this truth and they look back you're going to be destroyed okay just like how Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed by fire and brimstone if you take your hand off the plow and look back you're going to be destroyed by the fire and brimstone that's going to come via the the uh, intercontinental ballistic missiles because those nuclear warheads are going to be shut off by Russia and China and North Korea and Turkey and Germany and Iran and NATO because NATO is going to turn on America, which is biblical prophecy. Revelation, the 17th chapter tells you that. So, so NATO is going to shoot their missiles on America too.
okay? So, uh, uh, second answer is two and four. Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully and be patient when thou art changed to a lower state. For gold is tried in the fire and acceptable men in the furnace of, of adversity, okay? And that's another thing too. You know, before you can receive salvation, you have to be deemed acceptable in the eyes of the Lord. Because the Lord is not gonna just beam up just any old, old, old man, okay? You can't just be, be a nigga and, and, and think you're gonna get beamed up into a chariot because it ain't happening, son. It, it ain't happening, okay? You gotta repent. You gotta repent and come back to, to, the, to your power, which the Israelites are the so-called Negro, Latino, and Native Indians. So if you're an Israelite, you better repent because um, all hell's about to break loose, you know? Now, uh, uh, what was it, two days ago, there was an internet outage, you know? And I believe it was Google, Twitter, Facebook, and a couple of other um, social media websites that went offline, and they basically couldn't do anything. Now, they try to put the, the blame on, on the Houthis, just trying to say that the Houthis um, must have cut some power lines, but that's not always the case. Because, you know, brothers be bringing it out, how you know, sometimes the sea creatures will, well, well, you know, accidentally cut, uh, well, not accidentally, but sometimes the sea creatures will, will damage or, or uh, cut the cable wires. Then they'll send scuba divers, you know, back down to the ocean, ocean floors to basically fix the wires. But of course, you know, they're gonna to try to put the blame on the Houthis. You know, the, 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 the Houthis did it. You know, anything to justify a, a war with, with, with the Iranians. Because at the end of the day, it's really about going to war against Iran, which is biblical prophecy. But not to get off topic, okay? So, uh, Sirach 2 verse 5, for gold is tried in the fire and acceptable men in the presence of, uh, of adversity. Believe in him and he will help you. Okay? The only ones that's going to believe in Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, is the elect. Okay? Because the elect are the only ones who were given the gift of faith. Especially the gift of faith to come out in the code and teach. Okay? Not, a, not everyone is given the gift of faith to come out in the code and, and, and preach the gospel. And again, I'm not saying I'm of the elect. I hope I'm of the elect, the, 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 the one third. I, I'm, I hope I'm of the elect, okay? You no, know, because through faith and hope and fear towards Yahweh, Bahashon, Yahweh, Yahweh Shai, is why we come out here and, and do this work. Because we don't want to be destroyed. We do not want to be caught up in Jacob's trouble, man. Because Jacob's trouble is not a pretty thing. It's not going to be a pretty experience. It's going to be a deadly, bloody, horrifying, and terrifying experience. And if you're not right with the Heavenly Father and the Son, you're going to be destroyed, you know, when, 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 when hell breaks loose. So believe in him and he will help thee. Order thy way aright and trust in him. Ye that fear the Lord, wait for his mercy. And that's what we're doing. We're patiently waiting. And we're, we're, we're literally there, man. We're literally there. Jacob's trouble is literally knocking at the door. You know, it's, it's kicking at the door. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> you know, it's only a matter of time before that door gets kicked out. And, and, and uh, Jacob's trouble comes, starts coming in like a flood. Okay. But the only ones that's going to be shielded and protected from Jacob's trouble is the Lord's elect. So ye that fear the Lord, wait for his mercy and go not a, go not a sign that's evil, right? And, and, and that, that goes into that, that narrow path. Which, which was so narrow that only one man could tread it at a time, okay? That path was so narrow that only one man could tread it at a time. 
okay? Because on your left side, what do you have? You have fire. So if you fall to the left side, you get burnt, you die in the fire. And on the right side is what? Water. You, you fall to the right side, you drown, okay? So, so you know, as you tread on this path, it is true. You know, that the straight gate, you know, you gotta tread carefully. Because if not, you could fall either to the left or, 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 or to the side, you know? Which ultimately can lead to your spiritual death. Which, how do you die spiritually? Basically, you fall out the truth and then what happens next? The Lord takes his, his Holy Spirit from you. The, the Ha Racha Kodash, the Holy Spirit. Because once the Lord takes his Holy Spirit from you, what happens next? You start breaking down the scriptures incorrectly. You start calling on different names. You start, you start claiming to be the Messiah. You start calling yourself King David, you know? You start teaching that the Karagma is something else, you know? You stop going out on the highways and hedges to teach. You stop doing your videos day in and day out or daily, you know? You go back to the old vomit. Like like uh like the scriptures like 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 the like the script, like the, uh, the scriptures say like like the holy scriptures say you know the dog is returned to his own vomit you know you go back to smoking weed you go back to you know that that house partying life spirit you know you go back to partying and committing adultery and you know until until the day that Jacob's trouble come and then what then there's no escape then then what you're gonna try to put back on your garment. You know, hey, look, Lord, I was always with you. Nah, man. The Lord ain't looking for that. Okay? Once you turn your back on the Lord, you, you mark yourself for death. Once you turn your back on the Lord, you mark yourself for death. That's why it's important not to turn aside, man. Okay? And if we continue in this ministry, if we continue to preach this gospel, there's a good chance that we might be of the elect. But we always got to throw might in there because we do not know. That's why we cannot get complacent. That's why we have to do our best not to sin. We have to do our best not to do iniquity. That's why we have to do our best not, not to commit wickedness. Whenever we pray, we should be praying for more faith, more zeal, more patience, endurance. We should be praying for more understanding and knowledge and wisdom of the Holy Scriptures, uh, of the Holy Scriptures. We should be praying for the Lord not to take his Holy Spirit from us, to deliver us from the wicked, which is the Lord, which is the sword. So I can. We should be praying to the Lord to deliver us from the wicked, which is the sword of the Heavenly Father. Which we know the wicked to be the self-proclaimed white man, starting with the soul called the elites, taking it down to the rest of their nation of people. But something else we should be praying for is to sin less and to offend less, you know? Even when you're by yourself, you know? Even when you're by yourself, you 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 should not even be having a thought of, of doing wickedness or sin. Even when you're not, even when, even when you're not around brothers, you know? You, you might, you might see, see some, some, some pork bacon on the table you know, at, at your job, and, and it might be open for everybody to eat, you know? You should be telling yourself, hell no. I'm not eating that. I don't eat pork, okay? They that eat pork have made themselves an abomination. And we know that in the book of Revelation, it speaks about how, how the abominable shall have their part in the lake of fire, you know? If a woman is flirting with you at, at your job and you, and, and you know she got a man, you got to disengage. You gotta be, be like, hey, look, you know, I can't, man, I just can't, <laughs> you know? You got a man, so I, I, I can't deal with you, you know? You know, you, you, you should not be lining yourself up, you know? Be being sincere about this truth, you know? Even when you're by yourself, you should not be sinning to the best of your ability. You should not be committing a wickedness. You should be keeping the Sabbath to the best of your ability. You know, the Passover is coming up, you know? You know, I'm gonna take this Passover that's coming up, 
I'm going to take this Passover extremely serious. You know, I don't even think I'm going to laugh or joke. I don't even think I'm going to crack a smile. No, Lord's will, I'm going to have my lamb ready, my bitter herbs, my flat bread, my, the, 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 the red wine. Because we're in those times. You know what I mean? If it be the Lord's will, I'm probably going to get, get, get the lamb and the red wine today, as well as the flat bread. I don't know what day the Passover is on, you know, but we know the Passover is near, and Lord's will this be the last Passover. But um, not to get off topic, so uh, Second Ezra is two verse seven. Ye that fear the Lord, wait for His mercy. Okay, He that endureth unto the end, the same shall be saved. Like it tells you in um, Matthew the 24th chapter, okay? And we know the only ones that's going to endure to the end. And what does it mean, the end? The end means until the Messiah returns. He didn't endure to the end, meaning until the Messiah returns, the same shall be saved. And the only ones that's going to endure until Yahweh returns is the elect. Okay? Ye that fear the Lord, wait for his mercy, and go not aside, lest he fall. Ye that fear the Lord, believe in him, and your reward shall not be. And what's their reward? Their reward is salvation. Okay? Ye that fear the Lord, hope for good and for everlasting joy and mercy. Look at the generations of old and see. Did ever any trust in the Lord who was confounded? Or did any abide in his fear and was forsaken? Or whom did he ever despise that called upon him? Okay? And all you gotta look at the generations of old, you know? And that's why in Jeremiah, or uh, it might be the book of Jeremiah, it says what? It says, uh, everything that is written aforetime was written for our learning. That we, through what patience and comforts of the scriptures, uh, of the script of the scriptures, might have hope. Okay. You know, look at the generations of old. Okay, Elijah. There was a famine during the time of Elijah. How did the Lord feed Elijah? By commanding ravens to bring him uh, uh, flesh. Okay. Did did, did not uh, the Lord command Elijah to to uh? To go, by, uh, uh, did not the Lord command Elijah to go to a place where, where there was a large brook of water? <laughs> okay, so guess what? The Lord made sure that Elijah had water and he had food to eat. So the, the ravens brought Elijah flesh. Now we don't, we don't know what this flesh came from, you know. It could have been, it could have been food. It could have been food from, 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 a, uh, from, from a far away country, you know? But we know that the Lord fed Elijah during the time of the famine. Okay? You know, Elisha, you know? Uh, 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 Elisha, when, 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 he was, when he was surrounded by, 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 by all those soldiers, okay? What, what, what did Elisha tell that man that was with him? Okay, the, 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 okay, he basically told that man, he basically, he basically opened that man's eyes. Well, basically, Elisha told that man, they that be with us are more than, than, than they that be against us. And then Elisha opened that man's eyes, and then he looked around and he saw, he saw uh, so-called UFOs everywhere. So guess what? They were surrounded by chariots. That's scriptural, that, that, that is scriptural, scriptural, because in uh, Psalms, the 34th chapter, in the second verse, it tells you that the angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him, and what delivereth them. 
And then what and then what else happened? Elijah basically, because the Lord gave him, uh, not Elijah, Elisha. The Lord gave Elisha spiritual power. So guess what? Those soldiers that, that was coming up against Elisha, they 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 got smitten with blindness. <laughs> they got smitten with, with blindness. Elijah. Okay? When 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 uh when those two captains in their 50s came up against Elijah, what, what did Elijah do? He basically called on Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai. He said, he said, if, 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 if I be a man of the Lord, if, if I be a servant of Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, let fire come down from heaven and, 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 and devour this captain and, and his 50. And what happened? Fire came down from heaven and devoured the captain and his 50. And guess what? The same thing happened to the other captain and his 50. Okay, you see that? King David and Goliath. Okay, Goliath, basically, he tried to curse King David by his false gods. And then he threatened King David and said that he would give King David uh, uh, fle flesh to, 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 the, to the dogs or, or the fowls to eat or, 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 or to the beasts to eat, something like that. And King David was six cubits, not King David, Goliath was six cubits in a span. But what did King David do? He called on Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, and what happened? King David picked up a smooth stone and he put it into a slingshot and he fucking, he, he fucking took out Goliath. And then he chopped his head off. And he took his weapons. Okay. You know, look at the book of Judges. Okay. You know, then after the Lord raised up, raised up Othniel to deliver Israel out of a uh, king, king of Mesopotamia. Okay. Then after the Lord raised up Ehud. Okay. Was not the Lord with Ehud when Ehud? Had had a uh, had hidden a dagger, and then presented a present to Eglon. And then and then when, when Eglon when, when when his fat ass stood up, okay, he got stabbed right in his belly, and and he died. And then the hut just walked out like nothing happened. The Lord was with Ehud, okay, for what? There's also Barak, you know, which means lightning, I believe. Barak, B A R A K, B A R A Q, Barak. Okay, there was him, and then there was a, uh, there was Jephthah. Okay, okay, Je Je uh, uh, Jephthah basically made an oath to the Lord, like, look, if, 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 if you deliver these enemies into my hands. Then, 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 then uh, basically, um, well, 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 whatever you know is presented to me, that I will give you for for a sacrifice. In so many words, you know, Jephthah actually said that to the Lord, man. And what happened? You know, the Lord delivered, delivered the um, the the, the Lord delivered the enemies into into Jephthah's hand. But as soon as Jephthah went back, you know, after his victory, what happened? His daughter came out, man, you know? I mean, which that, that story was, was pretty sad, you know? Because, you know, his, his daughter died a virgin, you know? I mean, I mean, I ain't gonna lie. I do get kind of sad every time I read that story, you know? But, you know, show you that, that, that women have more integrity 
back then during the time of judges. Because, you know, she did not get all emotional and say, well, well you know what, Dad, I agree with you. You know, we really don't have to do that. Nah, she said, she said, she said, do that which thou hast vowed. So you motherfucking women here in America, you ain't got no integrity. Fuck you two third ass bitches. You know, but the point was, was that Jephthah believed in Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, and the Lord delivered those enemies into his hand. Gideon, okay? The, the Lord, the Lord, Use Gideon to, 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 uh, 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 as a great deliverance. The, the, the Lord, the Lord performed a great deliverance through Gideon. You know, Samson was not the Lord with Samson. He was a Nazarite from his birth, but he lost the strength when when it, when, when, when they cut off his hair, man. Because what did the Lord tell, tell Samson's mother? No razor shall come upon his head. So as soon as the razor went upon his head, he lost the strength, man. And guess what? Those Philistines ended up gouging out his eyes. Okay, Delilah. That was that woman that Samson was into. But though the, the Philistines ended up gouging out his eyes, but, but what happened at the latter end though? Samson called on Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, and said, Lord, if, 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 if thou, if, if thou givest, uh, if, if thou, uh, no, he, Samson said, he, he basically told the Lord, like, Baba Kishaw, you know, I beg of you, give me the strength one last time to, 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 uh, uh, give me the strength one last time, uh, 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 uh to, to take out these these uh, these, these unclean uh, Philistines, and what happened? He basically took two pillars and he pulled them together, and, and basically the, the ceiling, the pillars, everything fell on him and all those Philistines. So he basically took himself out with all those Philistines. But the point was was that Samson called on Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai. So you got to believe. Okay? Faith, look at the generations of old and see did anybody trust in the Lord and was confounded? That's talking about the Israelites. Okay, Daniel, he was thrown into the lion's den. You think he was just down there, you know, chilling while whistling? No, no he, he had his back leaned up against the wall. And now, he better best believe while Daniel was down in that lion's den, he was praying to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. But it's not going to tell you that in the book of Daniels. It's not going to tell you that. Okay? But you better best believe when Daniel got thrown into the lion's den, he was praying. You know, Baba Kushai, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Please deliver me from these lions. Baba Kushal, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. He was down there praying. Okay? He was not just, just down there just, 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 just chilling. Nah, man, he was praying. Peter. Okay? A a after, uh, after Herod Agrippa, I believe it was Herod Agrippa the first. Okay? Yeah, I believe it was Herod Agrippa the first. When, 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 when he had stretched forth his hand and, 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 and uh, he ended up putting James to death, uh, 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 well, one of Yahweh Shai's followers, right? When he, I believe James was actually one of one of Yahweh Shai's brothers. But when, when he ended, when Herod Agrippa ended up putting James to death, he also sought to put Peter to death because. Uh, uh, our, our people who were being wicked back then, they were basically rooting for, for Peter's death. Okay? They was basically uh, 
They was busy because she didn't care about the grip of the first storm. Okay, so. So, so basically, Heron had put out a decree to, to have Peter locked up. And guess what? Peter, Peter was deep underground when he was locked up. Peter was, was Peter was basically, he was basically in a deep underground prison. Okay? And they basically had multiple uh, 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 wardens basically watching. Okay, but it also tells you in the book of Acts that their prayers went out continually for Peter. Okay, prayers, prayers went out continually for Peter. Which is why in the book of James, it says what? A fervent, a fervent prayer availeth much. That's in James the fifth chapter. A fervent prayer availeth much. So prayers went out continually for Peter and what happened? The Lord sent the angel to get Peter out of uh, out of prison. Okay, look at a Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They refused to bow down to Nebuchadnezzar's idol, which he had set up at the sound of the musical instruments playing. And what happened? They got persecuted and thrown into the furnace. But guess what? Not a single flame harmed them. They was not hurt by a single flame. Why? Because the Lord has sent that angel in there, which that angel was Yahweh Shai. Okay? That was the Lord himself. Okay? But you better best believe when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, when, 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 when they was inside there, but before they got thrown into the furnace, you better best believe they were sending up prayers in their mind. But it's not going to tell you that. It's not going to tell you that they were sending up prayers in their mind. Okay, in their minds, they knew they was about to be thrown into, a, into the furnace. So, 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 they were sending up prayers to Yahweh Basho, Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Basho, Yahweh Shai, Baba Kasha. Please have mercy on us, you know. Please de de deliver us from, from 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 the persecution of this king. And what happened? They got thrown into the furnace, and, and, and not a single one of them got burnt by the flame. Not a single one of them felt the pain from the flame. Okay. Same thing with Peter. While 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 Peter was locked up, he 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 wasn't just sitting in in, in the dungeon. He, he wasn't just sitting there in the dungeon, you know, you no know, complaining. No, man, why the fuck do I gotta be down here? Now, man, this is bullshit. You give me all these chains at once, damn it. Now, now I'll kick, I'll kick the both of y'all asses. Nah, man. But while Peter was down there locked up, he was sending up prayers. Okay, so it, it wasn't just the church, you know, that was sending up prayers for, for Peter. Peter was sending up prayers himself, but they're not gonna tell you that. Peter was also sending up prayers. So prayer is a powerful tool, just like our apostles tell us. So look at the generations of old and see that ever any trust in the Lord it was confounded or did any abide in his fear it was forsaken or whom did he ever despise that called upon him? For the Lord is full of compassion and mercy and long suffering. Now a lot of people they'll see that word compassion and, and they'll think it, it has something to do with being soft you know oh oh my beloved peter since you believe in me i am going to send thee my angel nah bro now nah, the word compassion means to suffer it means to suffer with
because the Lord is all about suffering. It's not the Lord a man of war. If you're a warrior, you're going to learn to suffer. Okay, so compassion has nothing to do with, 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 with being some goddamn softy. But you see, that's why the Lord is not dealing with you, you, you Christians. You, you hear about the passion of Christ and you'll think, you know, he was just going around being, being, being a, a big soft ass teddy bear and shit. Oh my, oh, oh, oh my beloved uh, disciples, do this now. You know, and deliver them. And do this now. Go, go to the Gentile. But, but as ye go, my friends, preach say to get them ahead with your head. Nah, man. Nah, nah. That 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 was not Yahweh Shai, okay? The script, the Holy Script, the Holy Scriptures tells you that Yahweh Shai uh, was an austere man. Okay, look up the word austere. It means unyielding, rigorous. Okay, it means it means it, it, it means severe, serious. Okay, so you you Christians, you don't know shit about who you call Jesus. You don't know it. You do not know anything. All you know is ABCs, John 3, 16. And then you, you go to clapping and dancing and shaking like you got a goddamn Caesar. And then you'll go downstairs in the basement. You'll eat a couple of pork chops and go home and think you, you, did, you did God's service. Nah, man. The Lord is going to fucking destroy y'all. Okay, so Sirach 2 and 11. For the Lord is full of compassion and mercy, long suffering and very pitiful and forgiveth sins. Okay? But just because the Lord forgiveth sins, does that mean we should sin willfully? The answer is no. No, you don't sin willfully. Okay? Because what is sin? Sin is the transgression of the law. That's according to 1 John the third chapter. Sin is transgression of the law. Okay? So yeah, the Lord forgive him sins. Okay? But there's a difference between sinning willfully and, and sinning when it's out of your control because we're in captivity. Like I'll give you an example, you know? Don't you know it's a sin to defile your temple? Well, guess what? Every day we're, we're breathing in polluted air and chemicals that are being sprayed in the air. So guess what? We're sinning just by breathing. But guess what? We gotta breathe. If we don't, what happens? We lose consciousness and die. You know? Your, your clothes have mixed fabrics in them. You know? We, we don't make our own clothes. And then if we do get our own clothes, some way, somehow, Esau has, has mixed fabrics in there. You know? You know, I'll give you another example. If you have a daughter and she's a harlot, you're supposed to burn it with fire. Now, if you do that, you're, you're, you're being charged with first degree murder and your ass is going to be sitting in prison for life. Okay? So, so, you know? You know? There's a difference between sitting willfully and sitting when it's out of your control. And we know that, that the sins of the elect are covered by the blood of Yahweh. So we can only hope and beg and pray and have faith and hope that we are of the elect, the one third. Because only the sins of the elect are covered. And that's why you should always be praying to sin less. Okay, 
So, uh, uh, Sirach chapter 2, verse 11. For the Lord is long suffering, for the Lord is full of compassion and mercy and long suffering and very pitiful and forgiveth sins and saveth in the time of affliction. Which that time of affliction is really going to come during the time of Jacob's trouble. That's when we're really going to have to put our trust full throttle. Well, you should be doing that right now, actually. You know, you should be putting your trust, your faith, your confidence full throttle in, in Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Even before Jacob's trouble comes, you should be putting your faith and your trust full throttle towards Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Okay. Verse 12. Woe to fearful hearts and faint hands and the sinner that goeth two ways. Woe to him that is faint hearted, for he believeth not, therefore shall he not be defended. And let me tell you something. One thing you don't want to be is faint hearted. What is a faint hearted person? A faint hearted person. It's a person, you know, who, who, who basically gives up. That's a faint-hearted person. A person who took his hand off the plow. He don't believe Yahweh Shai is coming back. He, he begins to believe that a lot of the things that are written in the scriptures, it, a lot of the things that are written in the script, in the script, in the scriptures, in the script, in the scriptures, the holy scriptures, it, it's a fairy tale. Okay, you know, like it says in the book of Luke, I believe the 12th chapter, you know, he, he begins to say in his mind, my Lord, the length is coming, and he begins to beat the maid and the manservants, and to eat and to drink and to be drunken. Okay, you see that? Okay, so if you're faint hearted, that means you turned your back on the Lord, man. You know, you're basically the same as a soldier that went out to war and then, you know, you started to panic and run. You turned your back and you basically left your fellow comrades behind. Hey, 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 you know what used to happen to soldiers who, who, who used to turn back in fear and, and cower back to their homeland? And, and run from the battlefield. You know what used to happen to cowards like that? They used to get put to death. Public execution. They used to get put to death right, right in public. He was considered a traitor and a dishonorable person. So guess what? All you guys, you turned your back on Yahweh Shai? You turn your back on the brotherhood. Guess what? The Lord's going to put your ass to death. The Heavenly Father, Yahweh, and His Son, Yahweh Shai, they're going to put y'all, they're going to put y'all asses to death, man. They are death angels. Because there is a such thing as death angels. messengers unto y'all. So woe be to fearful hearts and faint hands and the sinner that go up two ways. 
Woe to him that is faint-hearted, for he believeth not, therefore shall he not be defended. So you're not going to be defended during the time of Jacob's trouble. And I'm telling you right now, this is going to be great terror and, and, and horrifying things that's going to happen in these last days. And a lot of you guys, you're going to wish that you never turned your back on the Lord, but it's going to be too late. Woe unto you that have lost patience, and what will ye do when the Lord shall visit you? They that fear the Lord will not disobey his word. Okay? And, 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 and uh, well, what's a part of the word of the Lord? Okay? The Lord commanded us to endure to the end. The Lord commanded us to come out here and teach, whether if it be hot or cold. The Lord said that through through the uh, the, uh, the uh, Apostle Paul. You know, the Lord commanded us to pay our tithes. Okay, that, that was through the prophet uh, uh, Malachi. Okay, the Lord commanded us to be brotherly, to study. The Lord commanded us to do our videos daily. We are commanded to do our videos daily. You see that? Okay. We are commanded to be humble whenever we get rebuked. We are commanded to be humble, period. Okay, verse 16. They that fear the Lord will seek that which is well-pleasing unto him, and they that love him shall be filled with the law. Okay, because what is love? Love is the fulfilling of the law. Now, we're not going to be saved on keeping the law, but we keep the law, statutes, and commandments that we can keep to the best of our ability because we're in captivity. Second Esdras, the second chapter, real quick. Second Esdras. So this is the book of Second Esdras, chapter two, verse twenty-seven. Be not weary, for when the, when the day of trouble and heaviness cometh, others shall weep and be sorrowful. Who's going to weep and be sorrowful? That's going to be the two-thirds of our people. That's going to be the heathens especially you Edomites, okay? But especially our people, which are the Israelites, which are the so-called Negro, Latino, and Native Indians. Okay? Our people, the Israelites, two-thirds of them are going to be sorrowful and weak. Why? Because when, when the place of liberty was open to them, understood not but they despised it okay okay so others the others is talking about the two-thirds because you have an israel of the most high which is the elect and then you have an israel of the two-thirds okay you have you have a a, a, a israel of the two-thirds So just real quick, let's go to the book of Isaiah. Break that down for you. Others shall be 
others shall weep and be sorrowful. Okay, one moment, almost there. So, I'm going to read it again, and then I'm going to go to Isaiah. Okay, this is the book of 2nd Esdras, chapter 2, verse 27. Be not weary, for when the day of trouble, for when the day of trouble and heaviness cometh, others shall weep and be sorrowful. Okay, first and foremost, that's talking about the two-thirds of our people, the Israelites, which are the so-called Negro, Latino, and Native Indians. They're the ones that's going to weep and be sorrowful. Okay, and I got it for you right here. And th this is why. This is why they're going to weep and be sorrowful. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 65, verse 13. Isaiah, chapter, chapter 65. Isaiah, chapter 65, verse 13. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, Yahweh, Mahashom, Yahweh Shai, Behold, my servants shall eat, but ye shall be hungry. You see that? The Lord said, my servants shall eat, but ye, who's the ye? The ye is the two-thirds of our people. Okay? You're the ones that's going to be hungry. Okay? Behold, my servants shall drink, but ye shall be thirsty. So the Lord is going to make sure that his servants eat and drink. Okay? Remember the story of Elijah. Okay? Especially that time when when uh when Elijah was, was with that woman and her child. Okay? When, 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 whenever Elijah would, would, would pour the cruise of oil and and um and, and, and uh, the barrel of meal, it failed not. Meaning what? It did not decrease, but it remained the same amount, which is a part of those miracles. Because in these last days, the Lord is going to be the Lord is going to show His elect men miracles. We're living in a time where miracles are going to be performed through certain men that believe in Yahweh, Bahashom, Yahweh Shai. Some, we're getting ready to enter into some some uh, some some perilous and heavy times, but at the same time, miracles are going to be shown to particular men that are of the elect whom the Lord is dealing with. Okay, miracles of healing, you know, uh, 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 you know, miracles of of, uh, of, 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 of of food not decreasing. You might open up a pack of turkey bologna. You might take two pieces of bologna out, make you a sandwich, but guess what? It, 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 you might go to you might go to make you another sandwich, and, and uh, it, you know it might still be a full pack of bologna in it. You see, the Lord could do things like that. Isaiah chapter 65 verse 13 Therefore behold said Yahweh Mahashem Yahweh Shai Behold my servants shall eat but ye shall be hungry Behold my servants shall drink but ye shall be thirsty Behold my servants shall rejoice but ye shall be ashamed Right Right the, the, the ones who scoffed at this truth who scorned at the men of whom the Lord has set up to teach You know, you know, all you guys who 
turn, you turn your back on this truth, you're gonna be ashamed. And, 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 and guess what? That shameness is really gonna happen. It's really gonna take place um, in the kingdom of heaven because you're gonna have your head down. You're gonna be ashamed of turning your back on this gospel, okay? You're gonna be ashamed of selling out. Okay, like it tells you, um, I believe it's the book of Psalms, or maybe not the book of Psalms. Okay, but um, it says, um, and they that consent unto them shall be had in derision, and a mockery and a reproach. Okay, Isaiah chapter 65, verse 14. Behold, my servants shall sing for joy of heart, but ye shall cry for sorrow of heart and vexation of spirit. You see that? So the Lord's servants is going to sing for joy of heart. But all you niggas who fell out the truth, all you niggas in the world who refuse to repent, you're going to howl for vexation of spirit. Chapter 2, verse 27. Be not weary. Okay, who is, who is Esther talking to here? He's talking to his elect. He's talking to the elect. So I'm here. Not his elect. Esther is talking to the elect. Okay, this is his message to, to you hopeful members of the elect of the nation of Israel. Be, uh, second Esther 2, verse 27. Be not weary. For when the day of trouble and heaviness cometh, others, others shall weep and be sorrowful. Like I read in uh, uh, Isaiah 65 verse 13, right? They shall howl for vexation, for vexation of spirit. Others shall weep and be sorrowful, but thou, the elect, shall be merry. What does it mean to be merry? Merry is another word for being happy, rejoicing. But thou, but thou shalt be merry right but thou shalt be merry and shall have abundance okay abundance of what faith all right as it is written thou shalt not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of Yahweh Mahashem Yahweh Shai so guess what you're going to be filled with the Holy Spirit the Ha Raka Kodash the Ha Raka Quedash, the Ha Raka Quedash. You're going to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Okay? The Lord is going to be dealing with you. Okay? You're going to be navigating through Jacob's trouble. The Lord is going to navigate you through Jacob's trouble. Why? Because you're going to be filled with the knowledge and wisdom and understanding of the Holy Scriptures. You're going to have abundance. This is how you're going to be fed the Word of Yahweh. Who's the word of Yahweh? That's Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai is the gospel. Okay, as it is written, lo, he come in the volume of the book. It is written of him. So you're going to have abundance of this word. You're going to have an abundance of the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. So through the word of Yahweh, this is how you're going to. This is how you're going to eat. This is how you're going to be shielded from Jacob's trouble. This is how you're going to be protected from disease warfare and the beasts of the field. And it's all going to be done through faith and prayer and hope and fear towards Yahweh, Bahashom, Yahweh Shai. Let's go to the book of Philippians, just real quick. So let's go 
to the book of Philippians just real quick, okay? And then I'll go to the book of Psalms. Philippians chapter 2, verse 12. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Right, because it is detrimental to your salvation. Right? Um, and again, uh, hold on a second. We get that in the book of Timothy. Let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 1, no, chapter 6. This is the book of, of, of 1 Timothy, chapter 6, verse 12. Fight the good fight of faith. And how do you do that? By enduring, you know, and, and endure the hell which the Lord brought upon you. You know, um, in Hebrews, the 12th chapter, it tells you if we endure chastisement, if we endure the chastisement of the Lord, the Lord dealing with us as with sons. Okay? So we gotta endure the hell that come upon us. Your car might break down, you know? Your woman might be a demon to you. Your, your boss might be a demon to you. Your boss might cut your hours. So you, your, your check might be shit when you get it. Okay? You might have to deal with badass children. You know, your, your, your children might be bad, might be acting up in school. I mean, who knows, you know? You, you, you might have lost your wallet. You might have lost your keys. <laughs> you know? You know? You, 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 you might have lost your job. But no matter what comes upon you, you gotta keep pushing this gospel. <laughs> okay? You gotta keep pushing this gospel, man. You know, you gotta keep doing your videos. You gotta keep coming out here to teach. You know, you gotta keep coming out here to teach, man. You gotta keep paying your tights. You gotta keep doing your videos week in and week out. You gotta keep fasting, keep praying, keep studying, keep watching videos, because watching videos is another way of studying, you know? You don't always have to read the scriptures to study. I mean, don't get me wrong, I read the scriptures sometimes to study, but most of my studying comes from, comes from watching videos and taking mental notes. And, and sometimes I, I'll even look up words myself. Like a brother might say a particular word, I might go and look it up myself. Okay? You know, iron, iron sharpened of iron, you know? And, and, and of course, you know, continue to be humble, could remain faithful, endure. You know, endurance, which the word endure means to make hard, man. And there's a reason why the Lord is making you hard now. He's making you hard for, for when Jacob's trouble comes. So, so when you start seeing our people die on a mass scale, it's going to be like nothing to you. You're going to be like, you know what? That nigga probably deserved it. You might see a nigga get ran over by a self-driving Tesla. And you might even laugh about it. Because right after his ass got hit, he did a couple of flips up in the air before he landed head first on the ground. And you, you might even laugh about it. You know? And you know what? That is, that is, uh, that's scriptural. That is scriptural. Okay, let's get that real quick. Let's go to the book of Job, the fifth chapter. Give me a moment here. See, the book of Job, chapter 5, 
first. Let's start at verse 18. The book of Job, chap chapter 5, verse 18. For he, who's the he? That's the Most High, Yahweh. Bahashon, Yahweh Shai. Okay? For he maketh sore and bindeth up. He woundeth and his hands make whole. To make whole means to be means to be made healthy again. Verse 19. He shall deliver thee in six troubles. Yea, in seven there shall no evil touch thee. In famine he shall redeem thee from death. And in war from the power of the sword. Thou shalt be hid from the scourge of the tongue, neither shalt thou be afraid of destruction when it cometh. You see that? At destruction and famine, thou shalt laugh. Let's read that again. At destruction and famine, thou shalt laugh. So what kind of spirit is the Lord going to have on thee when, Jacob, when Jacob's trouble comes? Okay? At destruction and famine, thou shalt laugh, neither shalt thou be afraid of the beast of the earth. Why? Because the beast of the earth is going to be in league with thee. Hell, the Lord might even command some of those beasts to bring you food. You might see a tiger walking towards you with, with, with a bag of food in his mouth. Oh, okay. Oh, so verse 23, for thou shalt be in league with the stones of the field, and the beasts of the field shall be at peace with thee. You see that? So, uh, you know, and you might live in a neighborhood where, where everybody got rock rylers, they might have, they have, they might have pit bulls, you know, they, they, they might have um, labs, you know, they might have, uh, they might have huskies, hounds, Okay. You know? But guess what? Dumb dogs are gonna be roaming the streets and there is Jacob's trouble. And the Lord, the Lord put the spirit on those dogs to be at peace with you. Okay. So now let's go to the book of Psalms. Okay. So this is the book of Psalms, chapter 91, verse 1. Okay, this is the book of Psalms, chapter 91, verse 1. He shall, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High, where's the secret place of the Most High? This doctrine, this gospel. This gospel is the secret place of the Most High. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Okay? Okay, that, that's why... The holy, uh, the holy scriptures. That's why the holy scriptures. That's why the holy script, the holy scriptures, the holy scriptures speak about uh, um, being occupied in prophecy. Okay, because this is the sec this truth is the secret place of the Most High. Okay. This truth, the script, the scriptures is the this truth, the scriptures is the secret place of the most high. Okay? Verse 2. I will say of Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai, he is my refuge, my fortress, my power. In him will I trust. Right? And that's scripture. Let's go to Proverbs real quick.
Okay, this is the book of Proverbs, chapter chapter 18, verse 10. The name of Yahweh is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. So that's why King David said, you know, the Lord is my refuge, my fortress. A refuge in the fortress is the same as a strong tower. Shelter. Because what, what is a strong tower? A strong tower is basically shelter from, from, from a, a, a heavy storm or a flood. Okay, a strong tower is basically protection from, from a, a heavy storm or a flood. Okay, so back in Psalms 91 verse 2, I will say of Yahweh, he is my refuge, my fortress, my power, and him will I trust. Surely, so so if, if, if you call yourself a Hebrew Israelite, your trust should always be in Yahweh Bahashom Yahweh Shai. Remember, hope that is seen is not hope. Okay? A gun is not hope. A, a bow and arrow is not hope. Okay, a knife, a blade, a samurai sword. That's not hope. Nunchucks, no karate, martial arts, jiu-jitsu, taekwondo, jujutsu. None of that. None of that is a uh, 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 hope. Okay, your car, the food you got in your house. That's not hope. Okay. None of that is hope. Okay. He shall cover, he shall cover thee with his feathers. What are the Lord's feathers? That's his angels. Okay. Matter of fact. Let's get that in Psalms. Okay, he shall cover thee with he shall cover thee with his feathers. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 34, verse 7. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. You see that? And that's how the Lord is going to cover you with, with his feathers. By his angels. The Lord is going to command his angels to deliver you in the time of trouble. So just keep enduring, keep pushing this gospel and do not look back because many have looked back and, and guess what? They got a bright future ahead of them indeed. Their bright future is gonna come from the explosion of those nuclear missiles. shield and buckler you see that and the buckler is what protects your your uh your torso um back in the ancient world warriors would, would wear bucklers or girdles which would protect their torso from from um being ripped out would, would protect their entrails from being ripped out by by uh, by thrust attacks or, or uh you know uh, uh horizontal swings horizontal swings from weapons Okay, so so the Lord is what's going to protect us. Okay, if we be the Lord's will, we be of the elect. We're hoping to be of the elect. Okay, the the one hundred forty-four thousand, uh, which is a part of the one third. Okay, thou shalt not be afraid for the terror, for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day. 
nor the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wastes that wasteth at noonday. Okay? Why? Because when, when, when those nuclear warheads are falling from the sky, okay, when those nuclear warheads are, are falling from the sky, guess what? Uh, uh, there's going to be men getting beamed up into what the world calls UFOs. So the Lord is going to deliver his elect men from the coming of uh, uh, nuclear destruction. Okay? Verse 7. A thousand shall fall at thy, at, at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. What shall not come nigh the Lord's elect? Evil. Okay? Evil shall not come nigh the Lord's elect. Okay? So guess what? During the, during the time of Jacob's trouble, when there's bullets flying everywhere, when there's people running like, like chickens with their heads cut off, when people are bugging out, getting eaten by animals, being shot down by Terminator robots, okay, uh, uh, metalhead, uh, 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 black mirror, black mirror, metalhead robot dogs, okay. When when, when people are being uh, shot down by by high tech weapons, when, when people's getting ran over by vehicles, when people's dying from earthquakes and tornadoes and hurricanes and being eaten alive by alligators and tigers and lions and bears and cougars, when, when, when people are starving out here, when there's disease warfare, when this place is being invaded by foreign troops, which is gonna be killing off American civilians, when there's civil war and race wars, when there's fires everywhere, when there's no food, it's not gonna come nigh you. The Lord said that he's gonna command his angels to protect you, okay? In a matter of fact, it tells you that in the book of Daniel, let's go to the book of Daniel real quick. Okay. One moment. Let me get ready to close it up here because I, I got to go to work today. Okay, this is the book of Daniel, chapter 12. Verse 1, and at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as uh, never was since there was a time, since there was a nation, excuse me. And at that time, and at that time, thy people shall be delivered. Everyone that shall be found written in the book. What book? The book of life. Okay, so I just read right here in the book of Daniel 12 and 1 that there's going to be a time that's coming on upon the earth that's going to be unlike any other time that has ever been in history. Okay, so that's why the Lord is, hard, is hardening us now. So when that time comes, you know, because yeah, don't get me wrong, we are, we, we, we are, in, 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 we are in these weak mortal bodies. So yeah, of course, we are going to be nervous. We are going to be shaken up. But the knowledge and wisdom and understanding of the Holy Script of the Holy Scriptures, that's how we're going to be stable. That's that's what's going to be the, the uh, stability of our times and strength of salvation. Lord's will, if we're of the elect, the 144,000, which is a part of the one third. So back in Psalms chapter 91, verse 6, I'll, I'll start at 5. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. Which is talking about the nuclear destruction that, that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand. A thousand shall fall. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand. But it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold 
and see the reward of the wicked. Okay, only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Okay, because at that time, there millions upon millions of our people is going to be judged during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay. So let's let's see what, what uh, time it is. Okay. Huh. And now we're 31 minutes in. Hey, but that's what happens when you have fun preaching this gospel, man. Hey, I, I enjoy serving Yahweh while Yahweh shine with fear and trembling and through faith. So yeah, you know, I gotta get ready to go. I have camped today. So with that, I'm gonna give all praises, honor, glory, respect, and blessings to Yahweh, Bahashom, Yahweh Shai, Bahashom, Rachaha Kodash. Salutations to the Lord's elect on the four quarters of the earth, pushing this truth and sincerity while patiently waiting for Yahweh Shai's return. And double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Which, which have taught us everything we know through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashom Yahweh Shai. With that, I'm going to say Shalom is on to the next one. DTA Abad Babal. Shalom.